Welcome ladies and gentlemen to another CUDA worksheet tutorial. We're going to be doing inverse trigonometric ratios today. Sounds more complicated than it is. Let's go ahead and get started. Now the basics of this. If you're here for inverse trigonometry, you should probably visit my videos on regular trigonometry first. Let me just break down some of the basics for you. I do this basically in every video. If you know this already, go ahead and fast forward. I will not be offended, I promise. I won't even know. So here's our reference angle. Has to be a right triangle. And then once you have your right uh, reference angle, you can label your opposite and adjacent sides. The hypotenuse will always stay the same. It will always be opposite the 90 degree angle. So if we have an angle and our reference angle is theta, we know that sine of theta equals opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And then we have tangent, which is equal to opposite over adjacent. Okay, so that's the basics of the trigonometric functions. Now, what are we talking about with inverse trigonometry? Well, inverse trigonometry is when you have the ratio given. Okay, so you have the ratio and you're trying to find the angle. Notice how there's a variable there, okay, in place of the angle that's normally there, okay? So for example, regular trig, regular trig you use to find sides. And I have a video on that in case you wanna check it out. So use regular trig to find sides. For example, if, we know, or if we're looking for sine of 30 degrees, for example, we know that's equal to one half. That means if we have a 30 degree angle, our upper side is one and the other side is two. It's a one to two ratio, or it might be something like two to four, 10 to 20, you get the idea, okay? Now, if we had a number that we're not familiar with, like sine of 32, and we had X, we're using trig to find a side length, okay? We're looking for that side. We have to have the angle for trig, okay? And then we're looking for that side length. Inverse trig is exactly the opposite. Imagine that we have uh, the side lengths. Like for example, let's say this is, um, just coming up with the, my own numbers here. Let's say this is 10 and this is seven. And here's our 90 degree angle. And we wanna know what is this angle right there? That, that mystery angle, we'll call it X. Well, we what we would do is we would say, okay, I know that this is my opposite side. And this is my hypotenuse. So the sine of x, that mystery angle, is equal to 7, my opposite side, divided by 10. So sine of x is equal to 7 over 10. So what do I do? How do I undo taking the sine of x? Well, let me introduce you to something real quick. So if I had 2x equals 10, I would divide by 2 to both sides. Okay? Why would I divide by 2? If I'm multiplying by 2, I undo multiplying by dividing. Dividing is the opposite of multiplying. So what's the opposite of signing? How, how do I undo the sign? The, how do you undo the sign is taking the inverse sign. So if I'm gonna, I'm gonna shrink this over here. I need to take the inverse sign of both sides. Okay, so let me move this over. The inverse sine is the opposite of sine and it, undo, it undoes, undoes <laughs> the sine of x. So we're gonna cancel this out here, undo it, finally got it, x equals inverse sine of seven over 10. So this is where we use our calculator. Your calculator is already programmed with all these functions on there. So you're usually gonna have to hit a second key and then you hit your sine key. Okay, and it's, don't call it sin, please. It's not sin. So sine, so hit second sign that usually will have this inputted. Sometimes you'll have to put seven over 10 first and then hit this. Most calculators these days will have you just type this in first, inverse sign, and then type seven divided by 10. So I would literally hit on my calculator this, and then seven divided by 10 like that. And that gives me 44.43 rounded, okay? Nearest degree. Oh, I'm gonna round to the nearest degree. So that's gonna be X equals 44. Now, what am I looking for? What are the units? It is degrees. Remember, we're looking for angle measures. So this is degrees for this. 
Oh, I was doing an example. Okay, that's, that, that's an example problem. We're going to get to it later. So for this one, it's even easier. Um, hmm, what do I do here? Okay, let me just grab this a moment. Take a screenshot, whatever you want. I'm moving this off to the side. Okay, so for this one, this, this is very simple. We just need to undo the sign here. So we're going to take inverse sine of sine B and inverse sine of both sides, okay? Because we got to keep it balanced. So that's 0 0.4848. So we're just going to type this into our calculator. This one you just type as a decimal, no division required, 4848. Enter. And nearest degree gives me, it's 28.99, so it's going to be 29 equals B. So my angle B is equal to 29 degrees, and I'm done. Okay, so that's how you do these ones. Hopefully you've, you're joining us now if you fast forward. So let's go ahead and tangent. I'm just going to hit random ones here. So tangent of W, I need to take the inverse tangent to both sides. Inverse tangent of that. Inverse tangent of this. Okay, this will cancel out the tangent. We're left with just W. So inverse tangent. Okay, second tangent key. Uh, 19.0811. Hit enter, and I get 87 degrees rounded. Okay, let's do a sine one. No, we already did a sine. Have we done cosine? We have not. So again, inverse cosine, both sides, inverse cosine. Now, I don't usually write inverse cosine each time. I just kind of implied that I'm going to be getting A, and then uh, I just I just do it on my calculator. 0.5878, and I get 54 degrees. So that's how uh, easy it is. Remember, these are all ratios. These are telling us how the sides compare to each other. So this is the adjacent to the hypotenuse. The adjacent side is basically 74% of the length of the hypotenuse. This is telling us the opposite side is about 48% of the hypotenuse. Um, this is saying that our opposite side is 19 times bigger than our adjacent side. Okay, this one would be telling us our opposite side is about 53% of the size of our adjacent side. So there's a lot of different ways to consider those. Now let's go back to this. This is kind of what I led with. Um, there's a, like a multi-step process. I don't know exactly how many steps, but the first thing is step one, reference angle. We want to find our reference angle. And in this case, it's right here. So this is our reference angle, step one. Okay, got our reference angle. Step two, we're going to label the sides. Label sides. Oh, it says find the measure of the indicated measure. Okay, the indicated blah, blah, blah. Okay, label the sides is our second step. So I'm going to label it opposite and adjacent. Technically, I could label this hypotenuse, but it's not needed because there's no information on it. Okay, so, or, and we're not trying to find it. Step three is we're going to set up our determined uh, trig ratio. So we're going to determine, it's very similar to finding sides, if you've seen that video of mine, determine trig ratio. Oh, you haven't seen it? Well, go watch it. It's very informative. So determine trig ratio. What trig ratio uses opposite and adjacent? We can go up here, or just remember SOHCAHTOA opposite adjacent that is tangent so we're going to say tangent of our missing angle and let's give it a name let's call it x poor guy doesn't even have a name so tangent of any angle is equal to opposite over adjacent we want tangent of x and we know it's equal to 27 over 38 so guess what we're going to do we're going to take the inverse tangent of 27 over 38, and that is gonna be equal to x. That's essentially what I do. I don't write inverse tangent each time on both sides of the equal sign. I just wanted you guys to get the idea of what we're doing here. So I do 27 divided by 38, inverse tangent of that on my calculator, and I get x equals 35. What is it, nearest degree? Yes, x equals 35. I actually got 35.4, but we're rounding it to nearest degree, I guess, 35 degrees. Okay, let's do another one. That was tangent. Let's see if we can get like one involving the hypotenuse. Here's one. So first thing, reference angle. Boom, right there. Label the sides, number two. Oh, did I say, okay, determine trig ratio. Sorry, I forgot the last step. Plug in, and that's step four. And then we have step five is solve. Step five, calculate. I should say calculate because it's mostly on your calculator. Okay, a lot of, people, a lot of my students actually like inverse functions or uh, inverse trig more than they like uh, regular trig just because it's more calculator based and just a little bit easier. So here we need to label sides. We have opposite hypotenuse. So we're gonna be using sine of theta because that's opposite over hypotenuse. We're gonna call it X. 
sine of x is equal to 40 over 42. So I'm going to take the inverse sine of 40 over 42, and that's going to be equal to x. So inverse sine 40 divided by 42, and I get x equals approximately 72 degrees rounded to the nearest degree. Let's even get another one with uh, cosine. Is there any other ones with cosine? I don't think there is. There's not a single one with, oh, there's more down here. Okay, so here's a cosine one right here. How do I know? Because we have an adjacent side. Here's our reference angle. We're gonna call it X, and here's our hypotenuse. So the cosine of X is equal to 13 over 20. I'm going faster now, as you guys can probably tell. So I need to take the inverse cosine of both sides. That's gonna be the inverse cosine of 13 divided by 20, and that's gonna be equal to X. Type this into my calculator. Let me draw the calculator one more time. Look at this thing. Okay, our calculator screen, look at that. Real fancy buttons. Boom. Type this into my calculator. What do I get? I get X equals 13 divided by 20. Going a little slow. I get 40. Oh, that's 50. It's gonna round up to 50. Well, it depends. Well, nah, I'm gonna call it 49. Sorry, 49 degrees. There we go. Okay, so 49 degrees is what that one rounds to. And this is the same process for every one of these. Now, let's go down to one of these ones, like 22. This one, you can choose which trig function you can use because you have all the sides given. So uh, we have the opposite, we have the adjacent, and the hypotenuse. So you can choose. My favorite sine. So I can say, okay, I know the sine of x is equal to, there's x, is equal to 16 over 34. So I'm going to take the inverse sine of 16 over 34. But you wouldn't be wrong if you wanted to do cosine. Like for example, you could do uh, 16 divided by 34, 28. So 28 degrees equals X. Like for example, you could do cosine of X is equal to 30 over 34. And you're gonna get the same thing, inverse cosine of 30 over 34. Uh, inverse cosine of 30 divided by 34. And we get the same thing, we get 28 degrees. Okay, so this one you can choose, these ones they have three, you can choose whatever one you want. Find an uh, angle X where sine of X equals the cosine of X. So essentially we need something where the opposite and the adjacent sides are equal, okay? Um, because we know that sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. So we need something where uh, the opposite and the adjacent are the same thing, the same uh, number. So that's when you have a 45, 45, 90 triangle, when those are equal, an isosceles triangle. So 45, 45, because these are gonna be the same measure and this is gonna be one radical two. Okay, so the times that sine and cosine are the same is when it's 45 degrees. So 45 degrees is our answer there. Okay, and let's see, draw and label all three sides of a right triangle that has a 40 degree angle and a hypotenuse of 10. Okay, so then we go here, we'd have 40 degree angles, right triangle. Um, so this would be, I mean, you can just add for this one. This is gonna be 50, this is a hypotenuse of 10. So this one's actually not even inverse trig. Um, draw and label all three sides of a right triangle that has a 40 degree angle and a hypotenuse. So this one we're gonna to have to use a regular, I don't know why this one's in here, but I'm gonna show you just real quick anyway. So we can say the sine, we'll call this X. I mean, sine of 50 is equal to X over 10. I'm using it because this is my opposite side to 50, my reference angle, and this is my hypotenuse. So I do sine of 50 on my calculator, sine of 50, okay? And then I'm gonna multiply it by 10 times 10. I'm just solving for X here. I like cross multiplying in case you didn't watch that video. So I get uh, 7.66 equals x. Okay, so that'd be 7.66. And then I could use Pythagorean theorem if I wanted to. So I'm gonna do um, 100. I'm gonna do 10 squared equals 7.66 squared plus b squared. So then I'm just gonna solve for b. I get b squared equals 100 minus uh, this guy squared. I get 41.31, and then I'm gonna take the square root of that. So I get about 6.43 equals B. 
So there's my three sides, 6.43. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. That's all there is to it. Maybe a little bit long, but you should really understand inverse trig at this point. It's not too bad. Hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to check out more videos on this channel and I hope to see you next time.